we can use the audio for the radio show. So Perfect. welcome, Corey. Hey, thank you for having me. Pretty cool. I mean, I guess the, the, the cool part about technology is you can literally, you know, chat and uh, all over the world. I mean, literally halfway across the world and uh, obviously and, and meet each other and get be able to do it, be able to find each other, discover music, discover radio shows and all that. So yeah. technology is a wonderful thing. I just wish I was a lot better at it. I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, and a, good, and a good thing. Normally we had to go to the, the radio studio and now can I, I can do everything from home. Beautiful, beautiful deal. So um, I know you're the guy doing the interview and all that, but catch me up on the actual blues moves. Cause I know, I mean, you know, basically I've seen we were tagged in you guys play our stuff and which is awesome. First of all, thanks a lot, man. We really appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, we, that's uh, it's humbling. You know, it's kind of, you know, we, I started this thing seven, eight years ago and um, I was playing with country bands and stuff and touring over here and all that. And I, we'll, we'll get in, I'm sure with all that the interview, but yeah. And I finally decided to do, do the blues thing. I just, I love the blues came up on it. And I just, it was this stuff that really got me. And um, everybody's like, man, you're crazy. Cause over here in the States, I mean, you know, country's just, it's King right, right now, the, or what they call country, the pop country shit. Anyways. So I like to say, I said, man, I don't care if it's just me and the bartender, I'm going to go to the equipment, you know, <laughs> paying me to play the same three chords. And here we are eight years later and we're still here and we're, we've released a couple albums and, and uh, it's, it's just amazing to me to think that, you know, there's a song that I've literally written on my coffee table out on the kitchen and somebody, in the Netherlands is listening to it or Germany or, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's mind boggling that really my, me, you know, but it's just, I, you know, I don't know if Eric Clapton ever felt like that, but I know I sure as hell do. You know what I mean? So anyways, I say all that long winded thing to say, thanks a lot for uh, playing our stuff. And thanks a lot for having us uh, on the show. So well, no problem. I can't give you a small introduction. My, well, my name is Rob. We do this show now for 18 years and we started out in the local radio station and which was one hour a week. And that was 2004, 18 years ago now. And just because we thought our radio station could use some good music and not the German music and the, the Dutch kind they, they play over here. So we like the blues. And then some uh, we invited some Dutch players in our studio and they wanted to play. And because of that, we um, in, went to a nearby pub and did some live recordings. And if you see our uh, YouTube channel, mm -hmm. you will see a lot of bands playing at our... Uh, it, it's in a small bar, but we're doing the recording. We have a lot of video stuff at home. And that now, home throughout base. the years, it progressed. And we, we yeah. it's a live show, so that live recording, a good sound man we have, so that the good sound is for the people yeah. at home. And then we play it on the radio. Then we started out in the... Let's order 2009. On the internet, we posted as a podcast. Then we discovered iTunes. Then we discovered Amazon. And now we are uh, down to 50,000 downloads a week wow. for our radio show. And it's on YouTube and on iTunes. It's one of the best listened to on, in the segment of blues worldwide. And that's pretty awesome because it's a Dutch spoken show. <laughs> <laughs> And well, most of our listeners are in the States. Man, <laughs> they, they, well, they, well, you they know, don't I'll understand you, what I'm saying. But yeah, mostly, well, we, we, the interviews are always in uh, in, uh, in English. English. Yeah. Well, you know, but I, I'm going to tell you right now that the, the, the I mean, the universal music uh, language is music, as I always say. But, you know, stateside, there there are no blues stations, man. There just aren't. And I mean, I'm, I'm pretty deep in the area where you would have some of it. I'm in the Southeast, and that's where... Um, they almost everybody says we're behind times, you know, 20 years behind times from everywhere else. But <laughs> uh, and, 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 but it's just so saturated with country to actually get a blue station. You're lucky to get some program that has maybe three hours a week scattered throughout the week. And it's normally a college station on the low FMs that you yeah. got to search out just to actually turn on your radio, hit a dial and have a blues song play it is few and far between. The plus side to it, though, is what I've learned because obviously I make a living doing this, is it's almost like you're in a secret club. Like the guys that love blues and love real music and the root stuff, it's like you got to take them by the hand and you open this little back door over here and you say, now nah, here's the good stuff. Like, you know, all oh, that shit's window dressing. <laughs> now, here's the good stuff. And, it, and, the, and it's what they feel. And uh, I will say that I think the, the fans that we end up getting, I don't know how to say, they're just true 
fans. They're true fans of the music, the true fans of the band, the true fans, yeah. because it's really what they're into, you know, and they had to seek it out. And damn it. They got it. You know what I mean? So anyways, there's that. But I've seen on the, I've seen on your website that you were, uh, for your local chapter, you won the blues challenge and that you were uh, sent to Memphis. You, yeah. you you were in the semifinal. I spoke to a lot of Dutch bands who also, they didn't reach till the end, but they reached the semifinal. Yes. And it's, um, they really uh, cherish the moment in Memphis because they speak to all the uh, important people and yeah. same like musicians, even if yeah. they're not make it to the semifinal or the final, that's not yeah. important. They just meet a lot of people and, and new friends. And we had a lot of um, bands who won the Blues Challenge on our show live in our in our in for an audience. If you if you look, you, we had the the guy who played alone. Oh, I have to look it up his name. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. I can see him yeah. on the moment. Well, I'll tell you with, with us what we learned. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this year we actually won it again. Our local chapter, and we were going to go, but they just canceled it. Um, oh they, yeah, I heard. Yeah, because so of you, the, had, the, you had to be in uh, in Memphis uh, in a couple of weeks. Yes, I would have had to. Yes, sir. Um, but uh, it's it's the same thing that you say. It's you you don't go to win. You 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 lose yeah. money going. That's but it's what you gain in 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 experience and friendships, connectivity, networking. Everyone in the business is there, and and the more you're there in front of them, the better it is for you. You know what I mean? And and we um. When we left Memphis that last time, we won in 2019. We, we, we have two local chapters that are close for us. Uh, the Piedmont Blues, which we've won twice, that we won it again this year, and the Triangle Blues Society, which is in a little bit bigger city, Raleigh, and we won that one. And um, and we 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 went up. It's a costly endeavor. endeavor. I have a five-piece band. You put those guys up for a week. You do it all. I mean, you know, you, you only win like three grand or something to do it, but that's not why you, you want to get in those festivals. You want to get in front of those people that say, you know, we met Walter Trout. We're up there, Mr. Sip. Uh, there are some big names uh, and, and, and then people that review your stuff. And I will say the last time we went, and I guess it was 2020. If you didn't know who we were in Memphis, like, you know, when we showed up on, on Wednesday, you know, by the time we left Saturday, you knew who we were you knew the logo <laughs> you knew the van you knew that's that little singing leprechaun looking son of a gun there man that, those cats are good you know and 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 that that alone because it's that is what you know that that crowd is what they want is worth every every penny of going up so yeah well let's 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 start a sword of an interview sure. because oh yeah, right yeah I, yeah i, I, I guess i bounce off we're talking like old friends there yeah. you go good deal. <laughs> Even it's, going, it's going to be a good one go ahead no, I have to keep in mind that there are listeners who never heard of you and I want to yes. introduce you to them. Correct. So yeah, sometimes the question looks a little bit simple, but it's to yep. introduce and and whatever leads us, we went, we, we go for it. So I, I, I don't have any script for uh, in front of me. I just bounce off of your answers Good on deal. my questions. But first of all, uh, Corin Lutjen, the name sounds does a has a sound uh, a, a Dutch sound in it. It's, it's looked like it, uh, some um, guy from the council didn't know how to write your original name and made it something out of it. Well, you know, it's actually funny you said that. Uh, if if I would have known, from what I'm told, anyways, let me do this. From what I'm told, is German. From what, from what I'm told, yeah, it's it's, it sounds German Dutch. But somehow so I'm, I'm I'm I look like an Irishman, so somewhere in there's got to be there. <laughs> we definitely come from over there in the Europe, all right. And what's what's kind of funny about it is, is over here nobody can say it right. I I always go by a nickname. They cut it in half. They just call me Luch. Right? That's pretty much everybody just calls me because nobody can say Loot Chin. It's Loot like money, Chin like chin. Maybe it's yeah. easier to pronounce over there than it is here. Here Luchin. it stumps everyone. And yeah. uh, but. Uh, if, if I would have known, if I would have known, I would have done this as a living. Uh, you know, you always take a stage name with two first names, right? Like Randy Travis, you know, he, he, that, that's it. His real name's not Travis. The end of, you know, I have the perfect one. Corey James is my middle name. Corey James and the Travis Blues. And the problem is I've already bought all the T-shirts. I'm too invested. I've already got them. The banners are made. This is it. We're going with it. So I keep telling myself that people couldn't say Bonamassa either. And, uh, you know, they, everybody can say Joe Bonamassa now. So, so yeah, somewhere in there, I don't know exactly how they stumbled across or if somebody scribbled something down. No, but it's, it stands yes. out, the name. It stands out. You remember him easier than James. 
Well, you know, I'll tell you, it, it, the, with, with the seriousness of it is I do feel that um, it's one of those deals because it is a little tricky, because it's a little difficult, is if, if you seek it out and you become a fan, you, you have too much invested in it now, too much gray <laughs> matter to now not really be a fan. Now you're hooked, you know what I mean? And uh, I will say that much, uh, you know, I don't even think we have fans. I, I mean, I think Facebook says we have 5,000 some. But I swear to you, I, I have friends. I don't have fans. If it, it feels like every time I play, we do festivals, we do bars, we do clubs. But I swear to you, I, I know everybody by face that's there. I, it's just one of those deals. So, so yeah, I guess it's, it, it makes you it, – it, it casts it out there, makes a real connection. It really puts them in there with uh, when you got a little bit of a difficult name. So we're trying to make it work for us, that's for sure. It works for you. Um, you became a musician and you picked up an instrument. I yep. uh, so uh, my guess is that you're more than all round musician or do it for it to, to get some bucks in it because I saw you also doing um weddings. So you do you don't you're not shy of playing sweet child of mine if the bride <laughs> asks you for it. This is correct. So um, I have an old saying, if, if, if they're paying, I'm playing and, uh, that, that's it. I mean, we'll do, uh, we'll do weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs. I've done them all. <laughs> I really literally have, you know, uh, and we, we, I don't mind doing the, fe- uh, you know, festivals and, um, I, I, as much as I love festivals, even, um, I think the, the right small club or pub, if it's like a hundred people and those hundred people really want to be there and they're there for the music. My favorite place to play. There was a little place, the Red Lions closed down now. All the good ones always closed, right? But man, that place just dripped mojo when you walked into it. You know what I mean? And yeah. and, um, and and that was one of, my, one of my favorite little places. But to, to, to your point, yeah, when it comes to playing, you know, I do 250 shows a year. I've kept that pace up for, man, since I've, I've about started. I mean, first couple of years, you know, you're just trying to get your name out there and get places. But I would say about year three, I think we just started year eight now. Uh, year three, uh, we did, I did 250 shows. That's between solo acoustic and full band. Um, and I've never sold that pace. And I've always thought, um, you know, you want to be seen. You want to get your name out there. You, you, you don't want people to forget about you. And I've always come. I come from a real blue collar family, hardworking deal. Um, I'm the lazy one in, in the family, only working 250 shows a year. Uh, my dad and brother, they actually, they're real men. They got their, they have like, you know, make, they're mechanics and tree lumbermen. And, you know, they, they, they do real work. I just got to go play music as I always say. And, and it is hard work, but the one thing I'll say in this business uh, that I, the, I would say the best compliment I've gotten from my peers is, you know, there's, there's plenty that can outplay me, but very few can outwork me. And that's something, you know, you're not, we're not going to not make it whatever that is. Um, for lack of trying or lack of, of, of being lazy, we're going to, um, you know, we have no problem playing two shows in a day, three shows in a day. Sometimes we have no problem waking up and driving that three hours to get to here to there. If we can make it, if it logistically can happen, I'm going to be on stage and we're going to do it. And the way I did the band when we first started this thing was I got off the road with, with a country band. Um, I said, that's it. I'm done playing country. I want to go play blues. Well, my only, I didn't really have a band. I had me, Corey Luchin, and I had all these great jammers that I played with at these blues jams. So I got a keyboardist and I got a sax player and I got another guy and, and I had a drummer and had a bassist. And I said, you know, as long as we've got a drummer and a bassist and something else, you know, we'll do something. And, and, and somehow a buddy of mine stumbled across my email was traveling blues man. And he said, how about you just call it Corey Luchin and a traveling blues band? And I said, well, that's a great idea. Cause now it doesn't matter what band I got behind me, as long as you got Corey Luchin, it is the Travel Blues band. So it's worked out where, where that's by the way. And I've had a lot of guys with me for, for a good long run. The sax player's been with me since, since the beginning. And he's phenomenal. But the only downside of that is when you play 250 shows a year, the only guy that has to make every show is Corey <laughs> Luchin. <laughs> so, so, you know, yeah. I, I did. I, I definitely picked the right uh, <laughs> genre of music because the more horse you get by Friday and Saturday, the, the more blues you play and the better the voice sounds. So it works out well. Yeah. The good thing about doing a lot of that different shows is I guess you can read a room. Correct. If you're you playing, know, we, you see what audience you have in front of me and which music to play and which set you have to set up to 
get them on stage or, or in front of stage or yeah. get them dancing or you know, at your attention. That's, I think that's the, the rough road to ride, but a good way to get really into the music and um, be at, at the top of your craft, yes, playing well, live I, audience. I, I 100% agree. The thing about it is, is that, you know, being able to read a room, we never play with a set list. For eight years, there's no set list allowed on stage at Travel Blues Band. I kick off just about every song. Um, you know, we have a couple signals guys played with for a while. I mean, you really know so you know so many songs, but we know a lot of them. And, and uh, you know, and, and if it's the right point in the night, I always say we do take requests, and I have a 100% request guarantee. And that's we'll play your request 100% of the time if we know <laughs> it. And if we don't, we won't 100% of the time. But normally, <laughs> If I can get through two verses and kind of know how it goes, just leave the rest. We'll, we'll at least attempt <laughs> to get it going and have a good time. The thing about, about it is if you wanted to hear the CD, if you wanted to hear hear the jukebox, you, man, you could stay home and do that. I mean, there's this room to serve. That's not why you're out at the pub. You're out at the pub to be entertained. And that's what I can do for you. I can entertain you. Um, I can play tunes. I can play tunes my way. I can tell a joke. I can, uh, um, uh, you know, stretch this one out. I can pull you up on stage. I can just let you dance. Um, you know, and, and and I think Buddy Guy had a great saying once. He had a, a guy that uh, he, he was at a, at a hotel room. And he said, oh, you're that guy who plays all the sad songs. Buddy Guy said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you tickets to the show. And you, you let me know, you know. And guy comes out and sees him after and they go back to the hotel and he says, you don't play one damn sad song all night. He said, no, but we did play the blues. And that's kind of the deal is people have this assumption that because it's the blues is bad, but I've listened to blues when I was happy, when I was sad, um, kind of, you know, I, somewhere I stumbled across a, a deal that said, sometimes you listen to the music for the music. And sometimes you listen to the music for the lyrics and depending on what mood you are in, that's what you go for. Yeah. And, and that's, that's how I relate to music. And, and that's, that's what I try to exude through people. I try not to take any shows off. You tr I try to give you 100% when we're up there on stage and give you, give you your, your money's worth. And uh, I want to make sure you laugh and have a good time, tell your friends about it, and, and come on back and see us again. That's the same difficulty with writing a blues song. Yes. Which is first. That's a, that's a question I always ask anybody. The lyrics or the, the riffs, the music, you know? And there isn't a new universal answer. It is the story you want to tell. Sometimes it's the lyrics you want to get over and you you you, you look for the appropriate sounds to go with along with it. And sometimes it writes itself. Sometimes people have a great, great music and can't write any lyrics by it. Right. And a bass player walks in and he says the, 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 the right song. He, he knows it right away. And yeah. someday you need help. Sometimes it writes itself. That's the same what you're telling now. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and uh, touch on songwriting. The way it hits me nine times out of 10 is the best way I can describe it. And everyone's different, just like you say. But for me, it's like I get a wave that comes in and this creative wave hits me. And I don't know if it's going to last three days or three hours. I just know this wave hits and I can write when I wrote the song Stop, the, the first track on Just the Blue Notes. I sat down and wrote that song in 10 minutes and it's, I, I love it. It's one of the best songs I've ever written. Um, and, and, and then there's uh, crazy about a saxophone. I come home after a show one night, it was four 30 in the morning. I literally wrote it on a napkin. I said, you know, we need to have a song that really shows off the sax player. He's really good. And, and there, there it is. We had the saxophone song. Then there's other tunes. My baby uh, just know. loves, my baby just loves to shake. Okay, okay. So that one right there, uh, per, per example, that one probably took me, I don't know, maybe a, a week to write. We have down in the southeast region of the United States, Myrtle Beach area. They have a dance they call the shag. And it's these Ooh. beach goers go. And that's what the actual song is about. It's, and it's weird because I know it can get interpreted different in Europe and different parts. But it's really a dance that they do. Now, I don't mind speaking a little bit in innuendo is, is kind of what I, you know. A lot of blues. Do. A lot of blues yes, songs yes, has a yes, lot of innuendo. Yes. And that's kind of what we're doing. So that one, I would say, is it's got a blues backbone, but it was really for that beach market. What ended up happening was we started getting radio play down at these beach stations with our blues stuff. And we one of our tunes, Do It For Me, was like a top five hit on this beach chart. And I said, well, God darn, I didn't even try to write a beach song. Let's actually try to write a beach song. And so that's why we did The Shag. 
uh, The Baby Loves the Shag one, and Son of a Gun, it went to number one the next summer. So that was our first number one hit on the beach charts over here on the States. And then, um, you know, people started following us with that and with radio play over here and getting to the blues. And we just noticed every time we go back to Myrtle Beach, Myrtle's Inlet area, our crowds get bigger and bigger and, and, and we have, we, we've been selling a lot more t-shirts and it's kind of what you said, reading the room, playing to the crowd down there. That's what they want. That, that's what they're talking about. Um, you know, if I'm in Memphis, I'm probably not going to do baby loves a shag, but in Myrtle beach, I can't leave there without doing it. So um, it's just one of those things. And, and uh, you know, one of the, it, it never fails. There's the song on the album that you almost think, ah, I don't know if we should put that one on there or not. You put it and put it on there, and that's yeah. the one everyone loves, and it's the one that you weren't convinced yourself. You know what I mean? So it is just what it is. I just I do know some of the the nobody can give you their opinion of it unless you record it and put it out there. You know, not uh, Greg Allman didn't write a number one hit every time he had a pen and paper. Eric Clapton has it done every time he's done it. He's they've written, really written wonderful music. I've tried to copy everything they do. I mean, I love them, but obviously not every single song you know is a hit. But it's a song. It's your song. And nobody can hear it unless you record yep. it and put it out there. So I'd rather write 15 duds uh, from what people tell me and get one hit if that's the case. And if those 15 duds mean more to me than the number one hit, then I'll play those in my bedroom and have a great time with them. And we'll play the hit or whatever it is, whatever we're in concert. And that's that's the way I look at music. Music is my thing. You know, I never get nervous when I play because I always think about it as this is what I do. And I'm willing to show you what I do. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope as my audience, you enjoy it. But this is how well I play it. This is how well I sing. This is how we do it. And uh, this is what we have to offer for you. Well, the good thing is, and, and I listened prior to this interview, a lot of songs. I hear some country in it. You could, you could see what, what origin is. There is some country, even in the voice, there is a, a certain singing in country that is different than blues. You hear it in it and it, still isn't country it is blues and yeah. especially when you you're going to the solos or yeah. the the saxophone gets a solo or you take him for uh, for you and that's yeah. cool uh george Toddergood does yeah. it the same way oh yeah uh, well i'll tell you probably, probably my biggest influence is delbert mcclinton and i just absolutely love delbert uh, my voice kind of fits um and raspy like um um and, you know, my, ba my band is model left. And, you know, of course, he had like that huge horn section. So I just got a sax. I can't, I can't, can't afford nine guys. But <laughs> he, had that, he had that huge wall of sound with the horns. He has the organ. And he's got, you know, him and bass drums and, you know, two guitarists. And they, just this huge wall of sound. And, and I said, well, I want to emulate that the best I can. So I got a sax player. I got the B3 guy. I got, you know, bass drums and me on guitar. And, you know, the thing I like about him and Robert Cray is, I, I call it progressive blues. I don't know what other people call it, but you know, it's, it is blues, but it's not blues, but you know, they, they, they never do just play a 12 bar blues, you know what I mean? But it, but, but you, you know, yeah. absolutely never been rocked enough as blues, you know, or, and as blues blues can get as blues and fever is blues. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not, but it is, but it, but it's, it somehow goes out to the masses a little bit more. Um, we, and I just we, love his style. So I've, I, somewhere in there, I guess it was definitely an influence I have. And it's a little bit country and a little bit rock, but right. definitely that big blues backbone. And uh, I guess somewhere in there is, is what we're trying to be as well. Well, we don't mind. We, um, if a music style doesn't progress, it's going to be a dead music style. And yeah. blues shouldn't be a dead music style. It should evolve. So we should, shouldn't hang out with Robert Johnson in his 30s, but be thankful what he did and take that and make it to something of your own. I, I, I could not That's agree, what we agree think, with but. you more. I could not. You know, the thing that people forget about that with the Robert Johnson is when Robert Johnson was doing what he was doing, it was cutting edge. People didn't know how to take it. Yeah. I mean, they thought he made a deal with the devil. I mean, it wasn't like if, if Robert Johnson had that mindset, then – we wouldn't have Robert Johnson. He'd just been playing hymns like everyone else. And that's so, the same, but but that you know, Sonny Boy Williamson running yeah. the hook up to the harmonica. He, he he was the first one to get it amplified, and people yeah. say you shouldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, that's it's it's it to me. It's um, you know, innovation is all all part of it, and doing it your way is all part of it. And you know, I, I think that there's a part with the blues. Um, you know, there's the old saying three chords in the truth. There's a lot of that. That's good. 
But I think like, you know, I, I take, you know, we have our song Cruise. That one's definitely almost country, in, in, in my opinion, country, country rock. We can do that stuff and we can kill it. But we can also come back and hit you with a song like Stop or Whiskey Drinking Woman. That is, I mean, it's blues. I mean, I don't, if, I, if you ask me to play blues, that's it. I don't know what else blues is if that's not blues. And uh, it's just one of those things that I think being in a box is never a good thing. No, I think being able to reach outside the box, grab some different flavors is a really important thing, but being able to, to, to uh, be true to your roots and, and really hit them hard and write good songs. And that genre is a really, really uh, an important deal. And, and that's what I want to be able to do. I mean, with, with, when we write a blues song, I mean, I want it to move you. I mean, I want it, I want it to really, um, I hope that there's a guy out there that says, gosh, man, that's exactly, God, that's exactly how I felt, man, when, when, when this or that happened. And because that's how I got started, man. That was exactly how it was for me. It was the first music that just, I was like, man, that is, that's how I feel. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to make people feel a certain way. And I think so. Yeah. Whiskey Drinking Woman, that was the song that I uh, got you on our show because I was uh, making a theme show uh, uh, about whiskey. <laughs> I, and I ended yeah. up with three shows, <laughs> a lot of shows about well, it. It's a popular drink, no matter where you are <laughs> over the world. That's for sure. Yes, sir. It, it uh, solves the problems one drink at a time, right? How is now in um, North or South Carolina where you were based? Uh, North Carolina. Yep. North Carolina with yes, the sir. live music. I know in Holland, everything is shut down at this moment. Yep. We have we have a lockdown. Okay. So for us, we're open. We're open for business uh, uh, here in North Carolina. Uh, this kind of a, what we call a red state, blue state type thing, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and I won't get way into politics because both sides buy tickets. But I'll, I'll just put it, the red states, the more Republican conservative states, they seem to be more open for business. Uh, Florida, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina is a blue state, but they're man, it's, it's, a, it's a purple state. It really I mean, it, it's just one of those. It, it's really purple, man. They're, and uh, so it, but it's literally from city to city. Um, I'll play in uh, Asheboro is my hometown. You can walk in, no mask, uh, no, no, just walk in and play. Greensboro, you have to be mass vaccinated, show your car. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it just, it's, you, you got to, you got, and there's town ordinances, but this Omicron has got us, I, I don't know how to say it. America it seems to be, whether it's our stubbornness or whether it's just the way the, the trout, the, the actual virus is working from what I've seen, and I'm not a doctor. This is just me from what I've seen on the news, guys. This is no, no one side or the other. Um, but it seems like we're like a month behind from what everybody else is doing. And I just don't know if it just takes that long for travel to get there and then the numbers spike and we say, oh, wow, we have to do something. I don't know if that's the case or what, but um, it seems like that's it. Um, but we, as of right now, uh, in 2022, open for business. I mean, I've got a full slate of shows to to July, and I'm playing every weekend. Okay, and uh, and should be the you know hopefully that's the case because how how I pay the bills. So now we we do a once a once a month a live recording, and we can't do it now. So and um, the strange thing is, Holland isn't a lockdown. Everything is closed. Only the 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 shops are open that sell uh, food. You know, the yeah. supermarkets. But if yes. I'm traveling, what I live. 400 meters. I live in a German border. In Germany, it, everything is open. Shoot. But in the theaters, there is a limitation or for so many people who can yeah. attend the show to, because they have to seat it two meters it apart. Yeah. So we did shows seated down and for a maximum of 75 people and still they enjoyed it. But it's yeah. first of all for the for the artists we do the show this is any 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 life is, is is a bonus as we say and now i'm thinking about it. we had um who came second to two years ago jose ramirez oh yeah he was second on the international blue challenge and jw yes. jones who won it visit yes. our show eight years ago or nine years ago yeah so, this is the big names and heavy hitters I, or we have a few big names ahead. Tommy Caswell will be there next year uh, in in in, was, in September. I was listening to his to his stuff just the other day, uh, sir. High on the hog, man, love it. Yeah, he's good. I love Mr. Tommy Castro now. Yes, sir. So we love it, and we love it to bring it on our uh, on our radio show. And 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 uh, I always say I don't. I know a lot of blues. No, I there's a lot of blues. I don't know. 
much yeah. more than I do know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. give us the new guys. Give yeah. us the new well, stuff. You know, I, I'll tell you what, to me, blues, um, it lends itself to that because, you know, I, I don't know how it is there, but the, what, what I come up playing was they had open blues jams over where I was at stateside. And, and um, you would just go into a pub and I was, you know, or a little place and I was 16 years old. My dad or my grandfather would bring me and, you know, let they sit with us. They'd mark our hands so we couldn't drink, but <laughs> I didn't want to drink. I wanted to go play guitar and they would have blues jams and they would have guys that were on the scene area players that, you know, played, you know, working bands that were, I mean, pros, I mean, they really were. And, you know, they're up there and they're hosting it and they play something and they do a lick and you say, Hey man, how'd you do that? And they'd show you and you go to home, practice that little lick, you know, all week and try to come back next week and, you know, mess it up. And then you do it and you did it and rinse and repeat. And you did, and you, cause we didn't have just YouTube back then. I mean, I was right on the cusp when that was stuff was starting, but, but, you know, you actually had to go home and get a CD and listen and maybe buy a book or get a tab or something. But the easiest way to get good was go to the good players, play with them, learn, get all you could. Yeah steal their licks, let them bar it, you know, whatever the deal was. And the reason why I say that is it seems to me with the blues, once those guys start seeing you mature and you come up and all of a sudden you're 17, 18, and man, he's not 16, you kid, this kid's pretty good. They're fans of you because it was their licks that, sh- that got you there and they're, they were helping you out. And then all of us, and you're obviously fans of them because they've been helping you out the whole time. And to me, at least, I, maybe I was just very blessed, but in the Piedmont Blues Society, the Piedmont Blues atmosphere that I grew up in, especially I'll, I'll walk into a room now that I've made a career out of it, and I've got a, I don't want to say i got a name, but I mean, people know who I am in my, my, my hometown and the surrounding areas of, you know, I play a lot. When you walk in, I mean, it's hugs, handshakes, and how can we play? And by the way, I'm playing with Sheila Kleinfelter and Chuck Cotton, and they've they went on world tours with Smoking Joe Kubek and, and, and Mel Mountain the Wicked Mojos. And uh, Chris Carroll, who is a local legend around here, was um, uh, steady rolling Bob Margolin. Uh, he played bass with him on one world tour with Chuck Cotton on drums. And I, I actually just bought Chris's bass. But anyways, it's like one of those things. It's like, these are the cats. And I'm at, they're excited that I'm here to go play blues with them. And I, it's like, are you kidding me? So the only reason why I say that is I think blues more than anything I'm a Tommy Castro fan, but he might listen to one of my tunes while, you know, on a break when he's talking, you can say, well, who's this kid? And all of a sudden Tommy Castro is one of my fans. I think the blues community really, I don't know, tries to bring each other up more than let's say the rock community or the country or something like that. It's, it yeah. really is more of a community of man. Yeah. This cat's a great guitarist and there's no way I can help you or this or that. At least it has been in my career. And, and I mean, believe me, I've, I've helped as many people as I can, but I've had a lot of people help me. And, and, and I, I, you know, and just this, that whole atmosphere is, is I, maybe that's why I like this blues as much as I do, you know? Um, and uh, it really is, is a cool thing. Um, I don't think I've ever met one of my idols or stars. I mean, Walter Trout, when I met him, him in Memphis, gosh darn, I mean, he just took all the time in the world with me, man, you know, and, and he's, he's Walter Trout. I mean, yeah, he's, that's, that's the cat right there, man. And, and uh, it just very, very cool, very interesting uh, the way it goes. And, and I, I guess maybe that's why I love blues as much as, as, as anything is, is the, is the community that's, that's around it. Yeah. Walter, uh, Walter changed a lot where, when he came in um, with his physical problems and, yes. and he, he, he now appreciates the time he has and he can be an example for anybody is he will, will do it. Yeah. And he did it in the past for uh, Danny Bryan, for instance, an, an yeah. English guy. And absolutely, we love him now. So let's yeah. hope you're going to see him back on stage somewhere, somewhere sometime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, I think <laughs> we can do <laughs> an whole evening. That was an easy interview. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've been told I'm pretty shy. Wink, wink. Not really. Yeah. No, no I'm, uh, I'm loving yeah, it. No, 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 I'm going to. Gonna pick some stuff out that it's gonna uh, not be the the coming show, but in the next show, I'm I'm sure. using is and do some introduction and pick play some records from it, uh, some some songs from you. I'm always interested in doing some some new stuff and some interesting stuff because awesome. it's interesting for me and for the listeners. And if they don't, they skip it through and they yep. just listen to the song. We don't care. Yeah. Well, the good I, thing is a- we don't. Uh, we, we, we don't mind. We we have uh, songs from 
25 minutes on a show yeah. <laughs> if yeah. we feel yeah. like it. There's yeah. nobody saying it should be three minutes. Otherwise, people don't listen. I think that's yeah. a good thing of internet. You know, uh, well, people uh, listening mostly there, they they reaching out for you. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely, absolutely agree. Um, I think that was one of the deals I actually had to retrain myself when I started doing the blues thing, which is I was those country songs. They were three minutes ingrained in you. And that's why when we did, we, we cut one album and, um, it, you know, I was trying to play by the rules and make sure everything got on the radio. And I said, next time I said, F it, I'm cutting this song till it cuts off. And if they play it, they play it. If they don't, they don't. And that's when Whiskey Drinking Woman was there nine minutes later. And I just said, damn, I'm playing slow blues. Everybody's taking one. We're ripping the shit out of it. And that's what's going to happen. I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm going to say that on radio or not. I'll probably have to cut that one out. But we're going to do it. And, uh, and that's what happened. And that has by far been the one song that worldwide has. There's some red gray matter. It's got 47,000 views on it now or something like that. And it's. It's the long, it's the one that nobody should listen to because it's nine minutes long. You know what I mean? It's the one that everybody listens to. And so we're there, but I'll tell you, seriously, I cannot thank you enough for, for playing our stuff and looking us up and giving us a shot and the more ears and all that. I mean, you know, you got a platform and some power there on, on, on any radio broadcast. And the fact that you guys give us some of your time to play our stuff, we really appreciate it. having us on the show to be interviewed. I mean, my one, like the, me making it. And I don't care. I don't care if I end up breaking even doing it. I want to tour Europe once. I want to get on a plane with my band, go <laughs> tour Europe, fly back, and I can break even doing it. I don't got to make a nickel doing it. But uh, that's my one goal. So it's definitely going to help if we're getting getting stations like you guys um, uh, playing our stuff and getting. Well, if so, I know the first tour is always difficult because we help yeah. some some English bands and some some European bands out for touring, and it is always difficult for a new band to to break ground. But if you have a weekday off, we mostly do it on a Wednesday evening. You're welcome to do a blue smooth live session, no problem at all. Yeah, well, that's all I got to do is fly five guys over there, so that's it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and, <laughs> and afterwards, it's mostly even more fun with us. Good deal. Good deal. Well. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll have Can to be dangerous. stay in touch with it. We'll, we'll definitely have to stay in touch with it, and you never know, man. I mean, yeah, you never know. It's it's going to be a take a while because well, we'll never know. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for for this interview and uh, Curry you. and the travel traveling band. That's right, the old traveling blues band. Yeah, we uh we we cannot thank you enough. Hopefully, we'll be traveling uh, over to you guys at some point in time. We'll play one of those Wednesdays. All right. <laughs>